This is Five Live Sports with Mark Chapman. Welcome back. This is Five Lives World Cup send-off show live from the University of London Union. The England band are with us, if you haven't guessed. Also on stage with me this evening, Steve Hodge, Terry Butcher, Peter Shilton, and sweltering under the hot lights is Peter Reid. You might have just—you might just be a puddle by the end of the two hours. <laughs> I think I've just seen Maradona run past me again. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't see him the first time, anyway. <laughs> I, hey, I, 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 you didn't. Hey, listen, I'd catch, I'd catch him now. Oh. Right. I'll go. <laughs> <laughs> Just. Right. Uh, whilst these four sit here, I'm going to take a seat as well. You've heard from him once already. Give him a big welcome once again. Please welcome back on stage, Alistair McGowan. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you. And uh, what a month we have ahead of us, eh? And uh, as for England, we do know one thing for certain. That after every game, win or lose, Fabio Capello will still say... Well, I am very happy for this performance. I am very happy for the player you were least expecting me to pick. I am very happy for the man who teach me to say very happy, because I am very happy to say very happy all the time. <laughs> but uh, no, no, listen, in this country you say football is a beautiful game, yes? yes. Yeah. Well, when I look in the mirror, <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> but all the players we here are right behind Fabio, which is encouraging. Uh, you may have heard Rio Ferdinand on Five Live earlier this week saying, oh, yeah, the best thing about uh, the manager, though, is that um, best thing is that he's, 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 he's full of surprises, you know? And uh, uh, that, 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 that's good, isn't it? Um, <laughs> because with Fabio, you know, nothing, nothing is a given, man. Nothing is a given. Even, even in goal. Even if Shea Given was English, Shea Given wouldn't be a given. That's a given. <laughs> but, um, Rio's teammate, of course, Michael Owen, won't be there, but who can forget how young Michael burst onto the world stage at the World Cup in France in 1998? One year after that, though, age 19, Michael Owen released and wrote his autobiography, right? His life story at 19. Like an idiot, I bought it. It was 350 pages long. He could have condensed it to a paragraph, couldn't he? I was born in Chester in 1980. Um, started playing football at the age of two. Um, was quite good at it. Um, went to big school, <laughs> played some more football, um, was good at it, um, started playing football for Liverpool boys, was really good at it, started playing football for Liverpool, was really, really good at it, played football for England, was brilliant at it, the end, that'll be £90.95 please. <laughs> And of course, the England manager back then was Glenn Hoddle, and he had a lot of people wondering, do you remember, why he'd taken faith healer Eileen Drury with him as part of his World Cup backup team. No one knew why she was there, but Glenn explained it in an interview. He said, uh, well, you know, the uh, thing is, when uh, Eileen's out there, she'll uh, cure the players by uh, putting her hands on their injuries, you know. So um, when Paul Lintz done his knee, Eileen put her hands on that, it'll cure it. And uh, when Darren Anderson done his ankle, Eileen put her hands on his ankle, it'll cure it. And when uh, Big Liz Ferdinand done his groin, we sent Eileen to Boost to get some painkillers. Um, <laughs> but everyone had something to say about Eileen Drury. Remember, even the normally placid Peter Beardsley was moved to say, Well, you know, obviously, uh, <laughs> well, you know, when I was playing for England, you know, way back, we didn't have, uh, we didn't have any faith healers then, you know, we didn't have a faith healer in the, in the setup. And uh, to be honest with you, you know, obviously, I wish we had had a faith healer because maybe she could have helped to heal my faith. Uh, <laughs> But back in 1994, of course, if you remember way back then, we missed out. We didn't qualify for the United States finals. Our manager from those dark days, Graham Taylor, though, is now an expert on, uh, on Five Live, of course. Yes, the trouble with the World Cup now, though, is... <laughs> is well, you're laughing, Sonny, but the trouble is... If you hear me out, the football has become a sideshow, really, hasn't it, at the World Cup? It's all about the spin-offs, you know, the, the PlayStation games and the toys and the, the mascot, you know. And the, mis the mascot this time, they call me, is called Zakumi, isn't it? But, of course, England, of course, have Ashley Cole, who I suppose is their very own World Cup willy, really, isn't he? So, uh, <laughs> Five Live... 
Five Live are also employing the services, as we heard Stuart Hall saying in the trailer, of Robbie Savage, who's surprisingly good as a pundit, isn't he, Robbie Savage? But I do sometimes wonder just how bright Robbie Savage is. The other day, he was saying on Richard Bacon's programme, uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to it, you know, just being there, really, and uh, seeing, I want to see them huge liners they've got in South Africa. They say some of them liners are the size of small cities, like, um, oh, what are they called now? Uh, townships. That's it. I'm looking forward to seeing them. <laughs> That's when you wish it was going to be edited out. Um, <laughs> Fabio, of course, announced his, uh, his 23-man squad yesterday. Everyone's been talking about the squad today and tonight, of course, including Mark Lawrenson. You might have heard him earlier today saying, hey, well, look, come on, hey, it used to be 22. It used to be 22 in my day. At the moment, it's 23. <laughs> But of course, all the 23 players, you know, they're going to be rooming together, aren't they, in pairs? Except one, presumably. I mean, how does that work now? Who does the 23rd player share a room with? I suppose when you find out you're sharing a room with Gary Lewin, you know you're probably not going to get a game, do you? Do you know what I mean? <laughs> David Beckham, of course, always used to share with Gary Neville. Yeah, and I remember in, uh, in 2002, you know, when we were in Japan and uh, Victoria was pregnant with their second child, you know, and uh, I remember Victoria was eating loads, you know, and she'd always ring up and tell David how much she'd been eating and uh, Bex was really worried, you know, he said, she's eating so much, uh, Gary, what's all that about? And I said, you've got to remember, if she's pregnant, Bex, basically, she's eating for one now. <laughs> I hear Stephen Gerrard apparently is going to be sharing a room with, uh, with Wayne Rooney. Um, yeah, I've been um, pair palling around with Wayne Lott lately. And, um, you know, I said to Wayne the other day that, um, you know, basically I wanted to see, see the safari parks in South Africa. But Wayne doesn't like animals. So I said, uh, I want to see them ones with the long necks. You know, what are they called? And he said, that's irrelevant. I said, no, they're the ones with the trunks, mate, Andy. <laughs> See, I think the townships is a better joke than that, personally. <laughs> and it's about South Africa. It's, but, you know, that'll be your way. I'll call that one all. Maybe it'll go to penalties. <laughs> anyway, after the John Terry affair, of course, there'll be no Wayne Bridge uh, in South Africa. Although, according to Five Lives' very own Colin Patterson, the whole story of sexual jealousy and intrigue between the two former Chelsea and England teammates is soon to be made into a major movie. Um, it's untitled as yet, but my money is on a bridge too far. How about that? Yeah, we'll edit that one too. Um... <laughs> I've always wondered, though, what the players get up to in between games. We're going to hear about it in a minute from the panel. But Alan Shearer said this week, uh, well, uh, in my day, we were always, uh, you know, playing cards in between matches. Uh, we'd be reading about ourselves in the newspapers or listening to our Walkmans. But now I understand they all play these Wii games, don't they? Or as they call them in Newcastle, YA games. <laughs> People are saying the BBC pundits have, have lost it a bit, they've gone a bit stale. I don't think they have. And they've added Lee Dixon recently, very successfully. Lee can always be relied upon to add a little wry wit to the proceedings, can't he? Of course, Italy were the last winners, Gary. And uh, nine months after that win, apparently, there was a huge rise in the annual birth rate in Italy. Uh, that's how the Italians celebrated winning the World Cup. It's fantastic, isn't it? You know, because uh, when England won it in 66, there was a power surge where everyone made themselves a cup of tea. <laughs> And for the World Cup, we also have on the BBC the delights of Mick McCarthy to look forward to as a co-commentator. Now, I love, I seriously love Mick McCarthy, because he always looks and sounds totally surprised by everything, doesn't he, Mick McCarthy? I remember this time last year, he was on the radio saying, It's great to see Wolverhampton Wanderers back in Premier League, you know. <laughs> they got a great ground, a great, great set of fans, you know. they got a great young manager as well in... Uh, you what? I'm the manager. I'm the manager in Wolverhampton Wanderers. <laughs> Back in the Premier League. Oh, I didn't know that. Oh, no, 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 no. Seriously, the only man in football who looks more surprised than Mick McCarthy on a regular basis is Everton manager David Moyes. David Moyes, Moisey, basically looks like a sheep who's just been caught on an electric fence, doesn't he? So, I'm very happy with all my players today. Every single one of them. They've all played brilliant. Every single one of them. Bar none. And Moyes is going to be on Five Live as well as a World Cup pundit. You have to say, in fact, the BBC on radio and TV have a great team of experts. And Mark Bright. <laughs> Mark Bright, seriously, is the only co-commentator who regularly says more than the actual commentators themselves. <laughs> and to me, he always sounds like a nine-year-old kid who's won a competition to be a commentator for the day. And no one's told him that the day is over. 
basically all he hit with Mark Bright is something like, it's a fantastic effort, it really is, he's tried to get a foot to it, and the ball's just bobbled as he's hit it, it's gone past the post, and, and that's exactly what happened, as you've just seen it, and now you can see it again, there, see how it bobbles, there, there it bobbles, and I'm still talking, I'm talking really quickly, patronising you about a miss, it wasn't even a goal, it's a bobble, and then I go again, I'm still talking, like a nine-year-old, because I can't quite believe I've got this job, no Mark, nor can we. <laughs> Well, I'm sure at some point we'll hear Mark Bright talking to Colin Murray, of course, who's going to be doing a late-night highlight show on BBC Two. Yes, I'm Colin Murray, or as I'm known in the trade, Alan Green without the attitude. <laughs> yes, folks, if you ever want to do an impression of Alan Green, just start with Colin Murray and get ex exasperated more and more by absolutely everything that happens. And before you know it, you've turned into Alan Green, and you have to say, that is absolutely dire. But when you start to calm down again, you turn back into Colin Murray, of course, but... <laughs> You've got to make sure you don't get too cuddly with it, folks, otherwise you'll end up slipping into Eamon Holmes. Now, and no one wants to slip into Eamon, do they? Thank you. And we heard about it in the trail from Stuart, but Five Live will also have a regular comedy show with Alan Davis and my mate Ian Stone. That's right, me and Stoney. I'm going to be doing a comedy show, me and Stoney, uh, two Arsenal fans, yep, so it'll make a change for us to be supporting a team with any English players in it, mm. and they're hoping to have lots of other comics on there too, although not David Mitchell, sadly, no, I'm sorry I can't be there, but apart from, <laughs> apart from hating football more than most women, I'll actually be far too busy doing absolutely everything else on the media as usual. <laughs> But the big question remains, of course, can we win the World Cup? Well, we need to stop the unsettling speculation about Fabio's uh, likely future for a start. Uh, but, of course, if he does go, the man in place already to succeed him, everyone's saying, is Roy Hodgson. Well, 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 yeah, that's right, you know, and uh, I'd like to, if I do get the job, I'd like to continue the traditions, you know, that, uh, that, uh, the traditions that Fabio has put in place, you know, uh, traditions like the England manager looking like an old woman from the former Soviet Republic. I think it's a good, uh, great idea. And if we are going to win it, I'm sure Peter Shilton would agree, we've got to settle on a goalkeeper. It hasn't been a clear choice, the number one, since David Seaman retired. What's that? Who said that? What? Oh, two minutes. Was that two minutes? No, I thought somebody was saying that the name of a goalkeeper. Um, <laughs> but it hasn't been a clear choice since David Seaman retired. Of course, he was tempted out of retirement last year. You probably know this, David Seaman. He uh, was tempted out of retirement. He said uh, recently in an interview, that's right, you know, where Real Madrid come in for me, like, you know, when it? <laughs> <laughs> I thought about it long and hard, like, you know, because they're a big club, aren't they? Got a great history and great tradition and all that sort of carry on, you know, and. Uh, <laughs> but I thought about it, I thought, hang on a minute, they're sponsored, aren't they, by Siemens mobile phones? I thought, if I play for Real Madrid, I'm going to have Siemens on the front and on the back of my jersey. I mean, I'd have been literally covered, is it? Anyway, he didn't go. <laughs> But if we do win, they'll be rejoicing throughout the land. Every man, Jack of us, Stuart Hall will be uh, through the roof. Everybody will be rejoicing, except for one man. One man. Five lives, very own Peter Allen. Peter Allen doesn't do rejoicing. Peter Allen on drive meets triumph and disaster just the same. His only response to anything, Peter Allen, is this. Mm. <laughs> That's it. Mm. If we do win on July the 11th, you can guarantee on drive on July the 12th, Peter Allen will say to England victorious, first time in 44 years, beating Brazil 4-1 in the final last night, uh, Wayne Rooney hitting the goal-scoring charts, two last night, sticking into a record-breaking 11 goals and the golden boot. Mm. <laughs> I'll be it. Still... You've got to say it'll be better than what they'll say, what, do on Radio 4. Because Radio 4 don't really get football, do they? You know, if James Nocty and John Humphreys are reporting the day after England's win, it'll be like hearing two posh girls talking about football, won't it? And England has finally won the Soccer World Cup. <laughs> Liverpool's Gerard Stephen kicked the winning kick <laughs> from the penalty circle in spare time. The manager of England's team, who's actually Italian. Now, that doesn't seem quite right, does it, Jim? Anyway... Fabio Caplo said he was, said he was uh, very happy. Thank you very much indeed.
So I um, I spend a lot of my time working with Peter Allen, Colin Murray, and Mark Bright. So thank you very much for that. That's, <laughs> <laughs> That'll be an interesting uh, next few weeks I've got lined up. Is there anybody, uh, sports-wise, that you don't do at the moment that you want to do? Uh, I've always struggled with Alex Ferguson. I've never been able to do Alex Ferguson. I've always wanted to, but uh, I don't know what it is because you can never understand what he said anyway. But <laughs> for some reason, I can't get inside his mind. Would you want to? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> Uh, Alice is here. Uh, we still have Peter Shilton and Terry Butcher and Peter Reid and Steve Hodge. Uh, Clem is out there. We can have questions for anybody that's on this stage at the moment. Clem.